Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Regimented to Decom video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with Gigabyte, specifically that the company have announced support for the 9000 series of Intel processors. On an official post on the company's website, we now see support for the Z370, H370, B360, and finally H310 motherboards to run the ninth generation of Intel uh, processors. So this is really good news. It's just a little bit of an update for you, just in case you do have a Gigabyte board and you were thinking of upgrading your processor. And now we're gonna move over to a piece of Nvidia news. While of course everyone is waiting for the GTX 20 series or whatever it ends up being called, we're expecting an, an announcement around Gamescon, as we all know, has been a rather interesting series of filings that NVIDIA have put in over the past few days. And these include what appears to be NVIDIA RTX-based technologies and patents. And this includes various trademarks from NVIDIA on RTX technologies. These include Quadro RTX application program interface for computer software for image rendering, modeling, image manipulation, and so on. GeForce RTX software for operating multimedia applications, producing multimedia content and for enhancing audio clarity and video display. We've seen the GPU Cloud, NGC. We have NVIDIA Jetpack, which is an add-in card, apparatus for recording, transmission or reproduction of sound or images, application programming interface, application software. We have NVIDIA Isaac, which of course we've heard much about. We have Jetson, self-driving, uh, autonomous self-driving and autonomous land vehicles, Jetson Xavier, which of course is an extension of that, NVIDIA HGX, which is yet another application programming interface for image rendering and manipulation, and then various technologies for VR. Now, before anyone starts saying, well, what the hell are they doing? Are they trademarking virtual reality? They can't do that. No, these are simply, these are simply their specific logos and most likely the technology that they're bringing to the foray. And we also see Virtual Link as well. Uh, there's a whole bunch of VR stuff, including VR2+, uh, two, uh, two VR2, VR+, plus, VR. Um, there's VR Link. And going back to March, there's also NVIDIA Orin. Without question, one of the more interesting ones for me is RTX. Of course, NVIDIA have demonstrated RTX technology quite extensively over the past several months, and we know that they have without question a lot of plans for the technology. The fact that we see it for both Quadro and GeForce obviously shows us that NVIDIA are pushing this technology for both professional users as well as gamers, which is not particularly surprising. After all, ray tracing does have an awful lot of potential uses, but it's pretty awesome in my opinion. I will be curious to see how this integrates on the next generation of GeForce graphics cards, namely the 20 series or whatever. And of course, how open this technology will be as well. Obviously, uh, DirectX has, well, DirectX Ray Tracing, which is essentially a bolt-on to DirectX 12. So obviously NVIDIA are just piling on that additional technology, most likely in form of Gameworks. So it's very cool technology. I just want to know what all of these other uh, things as well, like what the hell is Virtual Link, for example. But of course, we can probably guess that some of this is to do with the new uh, next generation virtual reality displays that most likely are going to be coming up Unfortunately, because these trademarks don't, don't go into specifics of the technology itself and how it works, it's not quite enough to us to give a full analysis, but what it does do is it lets us know of possible potentials of NVIDIA's future. And now AMD have formally announced the Threadripper 2000 series. We all know that the pinnacle, haha, of these processors is the Threadripper 2990WX, which of course has 32 cores, 64 threads. Uh, most of the leaks that we've already had regarding the specifications and performance of these processors does seem to be quite accurate. So we're going to be going through the specifications and some benchmarks that have actually popped up. One of them was an oopsie from AMD themselves, and they've since pulled the benchmark offline. But of course, as we all know, the internets never forget these things. Now, in my personal opinion, and obviously your mileage may vary depending on your usage scenario, but in my personal opinion, these processors 
are seriously disruptive for the market. And I know that the word disruptive is banded about really frequently right now, particularly from AMD themselves. But honestly, it essentially means that processors like the 7980XE from Intel is just absolutely decimated. It is dominated by these new processors. So just as a quick reminder then, the next generation Threadripper processors are based on the Zen Plus microarchitecture, according to our testing and, of course, AMD's own tests internally. Depending on the task itself, you're looking at around 3 to 5% IPC improvement from Zen Plus compared to the original generation. This translates rather well with Threadripper because not only do you get the additional clock speed increases, not only do you get the IPC bump, but perhaps most important of all, you get the sheer increase in number of cores that uh, we see over from the previous generation. So there are four distinctive SKUs, the 12 core 24 thread 2920X, we see 16 core 32 thread 2950X, the 24 core 48 thread 2970WX, and then of course the PS de Resistance, 32 cores, 64 threads known as the Threadripper 2990WX. The lowest in SKU, of course, is the 2920X, which cost just 650 US dollars, which is insane. Um, it's 150 US dollars cheaper than its predecessor. And then finally, we see the flagship, which costs about 1800 US dollars. So obviously that's not cheap. I've seen it available on pre-orders in the UK. It's looking to be around 1650 to 1600 Great British Pounds. Now that is bloody expensive without any question, but you have to remember the price compared to the 7980XE from Intel. And this is where things get a bit sticky. AMD have actually released a series of uh, promotional slides that we'll go into, and then we'll talk about a couple of unofficial leaks regarding performance. So we see the, the 2990WX uh, compared against Intel's uh, flagship 7980XE. And what we see, of course, is a between a 50% and a 35% increase. This does, of course, depend on the task itself. Cinebench, Threadripper does really well in. Uh, Corona, on the other hand, Corona Render 1.3, there's only around a 35% uh, increase in performance. But you have to remember, once again, the fact that the pricing is pretty darn similar. So the fact of the matter is, these additional cores, these additional threads are just absolutely, insan absolutely insane. So what about going further down the stack? What about Threadripper versus, let's say, a lower-end Intel SKU? So let's say the 2950X. Well, in that case, it's slightly slower. AMD do admit that it's 6% slower in gaming. Uh, so yes, that is a little bit of concern, but it's not terribly bad. But when it comes to creativity, though, well, that's where things get a little insane. It's between 18% and 41% faster. Bear in mind, of course, Intel and AMD are competing the, against these processors in the same type of price range. So once again, in terms of sheer value here, 2950X uh, and all the other uh, AMD processors are absolutely insane. Yes, they will not put out as high a frame rate as Intel. We all know that's the case. That's just how it is. Uh, and I've said in my i7-8700 uh, review and various other things as well, if you want the very fastest frame rates with the absolute best um, minimum frame rates and average frame rates, Intel do have a slight advantage. We can't dispute that. But in terms of value, AMD are just like beating them over the head with a mallet right now. This is particularly true when you look at creative apps. 32 cores, 64 threads. It's absolutely insane. And now we can move over to unofficial stuff. We'll start out with Sysoft Sandra. There have been a slew of interest for the 2990. I'm just going to call it a 2990 because it's so much faster. Uh, and well, yeah. That's all I'm going to say. Just yeah. Uh, the overall score, 768.05 GOPS. It has a uh, dry stone int of 908.08. Uh, long of 910.76. Well, you can see it all on screen. The bottom line is, though, this process is absolutely insane. And they are, uh, the various entries are using various different motherboards, including MSI and, of course, Gigabyte. So once again, if you do have a first-generation board, then, of course, you can quite happily plonk in the next-generation processor. But, of course, I would suggest you do a BIOS update first. 
just to make sure nothing explodes. Well, it won't explode, but you might have boot issues and that type of thing, which you can get around in some instances, but still, it's good to just not have to deal with that. As a quick reminder though, uh, this is still probably not gonna be as fast as Epic when it comes to certain memory intensive applications. We haven't got all of the details yet. We're gonna probably have to wait for reviews on this. Uh, and of course, as a reviewer, I'll be getting the hardware anyway, I could do some testing. But the bottom line is it looks like because our Epic obviously has additional memory channels compared to uh, the Threadripper platform, the fact that Threadripper, because of the legacy compatibility, plus of course they don't want to cannibalize the Epic sales, you are looking only at quad channel memory. So most likely, uh, memory intensive applications, yes, you will uh, lose a little bit of performance. AMD have kind of teased that anyway, but it's probably not that big of a deal, quite honestly, in most applications, but we can only wait and see. I suspect it may be more of an issue in really intensive, like virtual, um, machine type of things but this is just a guess and once again we have to wait and see uh, with uh, in-depth testing finally let's talk about amd's oopsie amd's own french website accidentally leaked the cinebench score and this wasn't like some bar that had like 50 percent and then the other one was just like intel no we actually have a specific cinebench score and we actually know the system that put out the score as well so that the 2990WX scored in multi-thread 5,099 points. This compares to 3,355 points for the i9-7980XE. We also see the same type of memory, so 4 times 8 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz, and the same graphics card as well, a GTX 1080, and a storage, which is the Samsung 850 Pro. So all of the rest of the stuff remained consistent. Of course, the only thing that changed were the motherboard and the processor itself. Once again, don't make a pre-order here unless like you've got the cash and you really need an upgrade by all means. But if you, you know, are somewhat on the fence, do wait. Don't just kind of jump onto something because at the end of the day, you are putting down a lot of money, even the cheaper end SKUs like, you know, six, 700, 800 US dollars, 900 US dollars. They're still not cheap. It's not like, I know it's, you're spending two bucks on a coffee, right? It's still a lot of money. So don't just pre-order something yet. Make sure there's no inherent issues with the processor, you know, like heat issues or power consumption bugs or whatever. So do, you know, remain skeptical, but if things hold up how they are and it's looking very promising, this processor is gonna be absolutely nuts. Well, actually this entire lineup of processors is, is gonna be absolutely nuts. But with all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.